everyone, it's Beth from Sweetheart's Hair and welcome back to another tutorial. So I'm with my lovely Louisa head and together we're going to show you how to take a really basic, simple idea like a French braid and make it into a wedding style or like updo style. So I thought I'd just mention that I'm on my own today, it's just me and Louisa, because uh, it's lockdown, uh, point three. So it's like literally, we can't go anywhere, I can't have models, can't have my videographer. So I'm so fed up with waiting for it all to start back up. I thought I'd try setting up the camera myself. Hopefully it's in focus, it's on autofocus, so fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, just me and Louisa, because this year I wanna show you guys a lot more tutorials. I'm still gonna be posting my very random sort of braids, kids hair, festival, updos, all that stuff. But I'm also going to be doing almost like a secondary line this year. And that's going to be me and Louisa. And we're going to be showing you like wedding styles, tips, tricks, you know, for the stylist really, or just people that love doing hair. And uh, the videos are going to be slightly longer, slightly more um, talking. So less edited really. Because uh, I really want to sort of really show you how I create these styles how to break them down so i hope you enjoy um the new style of tutorial fingers crossed it doesn't go out of focus if there's anybody out there who's brilliant with cameras and stuff and you've got any like tips for me please comment below because i do always read my comments and um, so anyway enough waffle let's get going okay guys so you're going to start this style by giving the hair a good brush i know that sounds really really stupid to say but you really just want to make sure that the hair is all worked through. There's no sort of knots in it. There's no tangles. I'm using a Styler Pro um, brush for this one. And I'm just making sure that the hair is all smoothed out. Next, I'm going to take my new toy. Now this, again, is from Styler Pro. I'm obsessed, guys. They do a range of like titanium hot tools and I didn't realize but what that means is it doesn't create as much steam as you're styling have you ever curled the hair and you can see the steam coming out and then obviously you release that curl and some of that moisture is still in the hair so with the titanium the curl is going to hold a lot longer and um, so yeah I'm going to use a wand today okay because this isn't going to be too textured this style but I do want to curl to the hair but what I want to talk about today is You've got to try and imagine the style that you're creating. So the style that I'm creating today on Louisa is going to be a French braid. It's going to start around here, just on the crown area. I'm then going to bring that braid round the side here. And then that braid is going to sweep round the back. And then it's going to end at the nape of the neck and the opposite side. So it's going to end sort of there, okay? So as I'm curling the hair, what I'm going to try and do is imagine where the strands of the French braid are going to go. So sometimes I'm going to want a bit of volume, sometimes I'm going to want a bit of sweep. So I'll just start at the front of the hair to show you. So I do want to leave out quite a bit of hair out of this style because again I want it to be more updo than French braid. So these sort of side parts of hair, I don't want too much lift on them. I don't want the curl to go whoop like that. Okay, so I'm almost going to be taking these at a sort of diagonal, imagining that the hair is going to be swept across. So my elbow is going to come up, I'm going to bring the styler, hopefully you can see that, and this is the kind of curl that I'm going to be doing. So it's quite diagonal, and I'm just going to leave out a few centimetres at the end, because I don't want the curl to be too sort of rounded at the end it looks a little bit old-fashioned a little bit prom so just a few seconds and that's our first curl and can you see hopefully you can that that curl at the end has just got a little bit of straightness so I'm going to do that again so all these side sections here my elbow comes up like so and I want that to be a sort of diagonal so it's going to just be like that nice and relaxed can you see the angle of the curling ones leaving just a few centimeters out a few seconds slide that curl off so can you see that sort of like that's the motion of the hair and i'll do that again on this piece by the ear also worth noting guys before you do 
your curls, these were quite brushed out, but I could just feel a little bit of tangle in this one. Always make sure that your hair is completely combed out before you do your curl. If there is a lot of flyaways, you could use a wax spray or you could use like a tame control cream. I'm going to be having a play with some new products this year. Now these front sections, if you imagine, this is where your braid's going to start. So we, we don't want it to be flat, otherwise it's going to look very school. So we can add a little bit of um, back home um, when we finish the curl. But I want to start that off. So I'm taking this strand and rather than curling it in this direction so my hand comes up, I'm going to stand this piece up because I want the hair to have that little bit of volume. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my uh, wand and I'm just going to roll that hair forward like that, then wrap the hair around, hold it there just for a few seconds, release that hair. Can you see that that's already given us that nice bit of volume coming up? I'm going to do the same on this section here. And just imagine just rolling that hair forward, putting your wand in, and then wrapping. And can you see we're already just creating that little bit of volume to the top of the hair. Now, coming back to these side bits. So again, this bit's not really going to be swept because the braid's going to sit there. So again, I'm going to go for volume rather than sweeping. So I'm taking my section, combing it out, and let's lift up that strand. Imagine the root being lifted. Imagine if you were going to back comb that section, okay? So rolling it forwards like that, then taking the hair around. And I like to use the little feet that you stand the um, wand up. I sort of almost rest it on the client's head. Not hard, don't lean on it. But it's just to make sure that I never kind of touch the head with the, uh, with the wand, because that would hurt. So I'm just going to continue that little bit of lift, I think, all the way through these sort of crown sections. Again, you know, it's not going to be a down style, so we don't have to concentrate too much on the curl. We're just trying to give that nice bit of texture to the hair. Uh, and obviously we are going to be leaving some bits out and it's nice to have that curl to the hair, although I have done this style without curling. Now this one here, I probably am, rather than taking the section in that direction, so sort of like a, that kind of line, no, I'm going to take it more like that. I'm imagining my strands going into the French braid. My strands are going to be flowing this way. So again, my elbow is going to come up. And we wrap around and we imagine that strand flowing into the braid. And I'll do all this section here in the same way. So this one here underneath, let me just turn Louisa a little bit, is going to kind of be like this. So again, I want to imagine that strand flowing up into the braid. It's coming that way. So it's really about sort of breaking down the style, what it's going to look like before you start to style. So again, guys, on this side, you're doing the sweeping motion. So I think I'll be able to show you a bit easier on this side, actually, with the angle of my hand. So think about your wand comes up that's the angle that we want and it's really that start by the root that you've got to concentrate on which direction the hair is going to kind of flow and all these are going to be flowing this way so yes i want lift but I want the lift to come in this direction. So I'm just gonna take this section here. Again, use your fingers or a comb. Make sure that section's all nice and smooth. Use product if you need to. So I'm just rolling it forward, but keeping my wand a little bit coming this way. 
one's got quite a few heat settings as well so if your client or yourself has got quite fine hair or damaged hair you can have a much lower heat I'm just looking at my very plain hands guys it's very sad no nails because of lockdown no eyebrows no eyelashes makes you realize how much you actually spend a month on your face and your hands and how you look but it's got to be done hopefully it won't be too much longer what's happening where you are in the world is it the same as the uk we're we're completely locked down at the minute we can go to the supermarket and we can go outside to exercise uh, but that's about it um yeah that's all we can do at the minute i'm homeschooling nightmare some people are just cut out for stuff like that but i am not one of them the kids are dead good it's me no i'm not cut out for homeschooling but we have to do it for another six weeks at least I'm not going to use too much product on Louisa today guys because I'm a bit lazy and I don't want to have to wash her hair. I've got a few Louisas, I think I've got about seven. Um, but I don't want to have to wash her hair too often so if it was a client I would probably feel like this hair was looking a little bit dry, a little bit fly away. Um, so I would be using like I say a tame cream or um, a wax spray. Um, not too much, but just enough to sort of just close those strands down a little bit. Um, but I still think I'll be able to do it without using too much product. So this curl on the nape of the neck on the left shoulder is coming that way. And when I pick up this section here, it's going to be coming the other way. Um, so if you imagine this is where the two strands are meeting that braid in the centre. So the braid will sit sort of like there. So this section comes this way, that section goes that way. Okay guys, so all of Louisa's hair has got a beautiful curl to it now. Um, so we're going to leave out some side sections um, because we need to frame the face but also those side sections we are going to kind of sweep some of them into the style and it's really going to take it from like a French braid to that sort of wedding updo more sort of look to it. Um, so first things first, get those pieces down and pin them out the way. Okay, so you're going to decide what bits you're going to put down now. So usually when you're working with a client you'd have a mirror. Really important to have a mirror. I always ask that. First thing I do when I turn up on a job to do a wedding, I say, where's the mirror? Because I want to be able to see the client from the front. But more importantly, I want them to see themselves because they're the ones that know how much volume they like, how many bits down they, they, they like. So they need to be able to see their own face, okay? And that sounds like a really obvious thing to say, but I have seen quite a few stylists work without a mirror and it's quite difficult um, to get that, that sort of finish that they are after, not you, what they are after. So, we're going to take a comb and you imagine, you know, we want that bit of volume because we want it to look wedding. I am just kind of looking in the camera um, window here, that's why I might not be looking directly at you. It's like a teeny little window that I'm trying to go off. So, I'm going to leave quite a bit down because I do want sections that we are going to pin into the style and I'm going to do that all the way to the ear, okay? Not crazy amounts, I don't want to disguise the braid too much, okay? I'm going to leave that centre piece, I think. And when I've taken these sections, I haven't simply just gone in a straight line there, I've sort of zigzagged them into the hair and it just gives a much more natural flow. And I'm just going to gently pin that out the way so I don't sort of use that hair by mistake. Do the same on the other side for me. So these front sections are going to be the start of our braid. Now, I do want a little bit of volume in this front section. So just to help it out, I know we lifted it a bit with the curl. I am just going to go in um, and do um, some back combing. So, I'm just going to lift that front hair up, bring it forward slightly and just do a few pushes with my comb, okay? And I'll probably do a little bit on this side here. 
Now when you're doing your back comb guys, please remember some people what they do is they don't go to the roots and all you're doing then is giving structure above the roots and then the hair is just going to flop, okay? So when you do that back comb, really important, little bit of tension, not too hard, push right down to that root for a few sort of pushes. That's going to give that structure at that root and then you can work a little bit more up into the hair if you want to. So just a little bit more. Again, can you see it's all about direction? So I know that this strand is going to be coming across like that to start the braid. So my back comb, so my strand is there, and my back comb's this way. And then I'm just going to use the other end of my comb. These combs are great, guys. You must get one um, that's got the little prongs. <coughs> excuse me. Um, great for just really gently working over that surface area because you do not want to see your back comb obviously that looks really messy so just take a little bit of time okay so we're going to start the french braid so i want you to be standing on this right hand shoulder because this is the direction the braid comes first i'm not doing that because i'm trying to stay out of your way and um, so that's really really important and also when you break your three strands up don't go from the root because you've created that nice bit of volume at the roots. So I'm breaking my strands into three, starting my French braid, crossing over the middle, over the middle, one more time, over the middle. Can you see I'm lifting my hands, I'm not pulling down on the hair. So over the middle again. I'm gonna take our first section and just add that into the hair. We're not going to do any teasing out yet, we're going to do a few more strands first. So I've just added that into the hair, stayed light, but when you cross over, don't cross over too loosely. Because in order to tease out, we need a little bit of something to pull away from. So if everything's too loose, it's all going to become really horrible and like baggy. We don't want a baggy braid. So when I'm crossing over, I am making sure that it has got that little bit of tension there, using my thumb to hold down. Then I'm going to take a section from this side. Using my fingers, using any product that you need. Folding across, keeping that little bit of tension. I'm going to stop there and I'm just going to start to tease out. Now it's really hard to do without a mirror. This is where you'd be looking forward into that mirror and you'd be asking your client or yourself, um, how big do you want this to look? How much volume are you after? Okay, and remember you can do more teasing at the end but I always like to start the teasing off because I don't like to mess the braid up. I'm not going to do these two yet because it's too close to my hand. I haven't got enough tension in the braid yet to pull away from because if I pull that one, I'm just pulling this strand in my hand. So we're going to go to another section of hair, adding it in using a comb or a brush make sure your sections are clean so i'm still coming sort of down towards this right ear at the moment i'm going to stop there and i'm just going to go in now i'm not just pulling these sections that are going feeding into the braid i'm going to go into the very very center And just lift those up if the hair is very very soft and silky that's where I'd go in with like a sort of dry shampoo texture spray clay spray maybe even some hairspray and just help me to lift that up so adding in again keeping those sections clean using that thumb crossing over I go into the center of the braids and just start to create some lovely volume and texture to that braid. I am going to leave out some little pieces of hair on this hairline here. Now, my braid's still coming in this direction, can you see? But on my next piece now, I do want to start to sweep it. So I'm just going to turn Louise, hopefully you can see. So I'm going to take this section across. 
So you're still kind of standing over here. Okay, let me show you. So you'd sort of be more there. But as you start to bring this braid around, I'd start to stand behind the client, which obviously I'm not going to do because you can't see. And then you'd work your way round to the other side. So I'm just going to sort of like do my hands in a really weird way here. So you'd sort of be standing more behind the client at this point, crossing over, because the positioning of your hands is going to make such a difference how this braid sits on the head. So can you see now, can you see my hands were there, then they were here, and now they're starting to move this way. Let's go back, let's do some teasing out, my favorite bit. I am gonna do quite a bit at the end as well. And I think you'll be quite amazed at the end of this style, how much, yes, it does look like a French braid, but it doesn't either, it's like, it's like a reinvented French braid, isn't it, when you're doing all this messing around with it. Such a simple concept, so pretty. I think sometimes as stylists we think, oh, we need to learn all these crazy techniques and we need to learn all these different braids, but actually, if the hair's pretty, that's all the bride cares about. So bringing these strands around now, again, really take your time. It's going to make such a difference to the end product if you make sure that your strands, I call them clean. Leaving out, guys, some bits around the nape of the neck. I can decide what to do with those at the ends. Bringing my hands around. Now the ends of her hair have gone little bit fly away, a little bit dry. So I'm just going to comb those through, make sure that my sections stay nice and brushed through. I'm going to just tease out this hair as well. It always amazes me how so little hair, if it's teased out correctly, can just become so much more. Just finishing that braid off and popping an elastic in. Okay, so you've kind of created this really pretty braid at the minute, but it still looks quite braidy. I mean, you could do this as style in itself, really. But I'm going to go in now, and I don't want you to pick big chunks with your fingers, okay? Really concentrate on lifting out these random strands. It's just going to create this really pretty textured feel to the style. And I also want you to sort of come into that centre of the braid as well and just start to tease out again, using the products where needed. I am desperately trying not to spray today, can you tell? Because I'm being super lazy. <laughs> but I'm sure you understand. So can you see how that's quite plain? I'm just gonna see if I can just hold on to the hair and almost just take random bits. Hopefully you can see this on camera. I'm gonna try and get a hair dyed so it's more sort of tonal because she's very one colour, Louisa is. And I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing a lot easier when I do that. And if you're practicing these styles, guys, I kind of practice going too far. Does that make sense? So, like, I keep pulling and I keep pulling until I've taken it from nice to, oh, oh no, that's a bit too much now because I think that's a really good time to do that, is when you're practicing. You definitely don't want to do it on a client. Really hard to rein it in. You'll have to put a load of pins in. Um, so, you know, tease and tease until you think it looks pretty and then practice that stopping, okay? So, okay, I've learned from my last effort that it went too big, too far. So moving to the front, guys, you really want to have that mirror, like I said, because you need to be able to see how it's looking from the front, um, that there's no gaps. If there is gaps, I sort of get my comb in like that, fudge them together and then very lightly spray. You have put that bit of back comb in there, so it should be fairly easy to get that volume in and for it to sort of fill any gaps because you've already got that little bit of structure within the hair. Next, what I'm going to do, now this is optional, I'm going to create a bun, like I said, to the nape of the neck here. 
but to just add that bit of sort of almost bridal type feel to the style I've just cut up a normal bun maker kind of unraveled it wrapped it around to the sort of shape that I'm after and I'm just going to stick a pin through there just to secure it and then I'm just going to place this where I want that bun to sit so I'm almost sort of like wedging it up into that braid and then I'm just going to use some pins to just secure that in so I'm using black pins today on purpose because I want to show you that you shouldn't be scared of using pins and having them be seen if you pin in the right way you will not see your pin obviously on a client I wouldn't do that um, so yeah so you're just going to take your long hair grip okay I'm going to push it into that netting push it up into the style and then back down almost like a folding motion so boom do the same on the other side so already you can see that's created that lovely volume there so now you're going to have a bit of a play I call it okay and you're going to decide where this is going to look pretty so I'm just going to kind of tease out this braid a little bit more just to give myself a little bit more sort of hair to cover that netting. Don't forget, I've got quite a bit of hair here that I can use as well. I'm just gonna kind of bring that braid, I think I'm gonna tuck that tail that way, and I'm just gonna bring that braid sitting about there. Okay, and then again, guys, now, don't be scared. Don't think you've always got a pin from behind. You can literally go directly through the hair, but what you can't do, the hair's running this way, okay? So I don't want to turn my pin sort of um, horizontally. I want to turn it vertically. So the end is sitting vertically, not horizontally. Because if I go in horizontally, I'm really going to push that hair. Can you see? Hopefully, even on this camera, you can see that black dot, okay? Take that out again. Now, if I go in vertically, I'm still catching a tiny bit of hair, but I'm pushing into that bun maker and you can't see that grip at all. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to do more on hair pinning um, at a later date. I will pin some from behind, but a lot of them I'm just going straight into the style, which is so nice to be able to do. So pinning underneath as well. I'm just going to lift Louisa up slightly. There it is. Okay, I'm going to take out these front sections now and we're going to work on these front sections. So again, obviously, you'd be asking your clients what sort of bits down do you want, what do you feel comfortable with. You know, some people will say to me, oh no, I hate it being around my face. So this is where I just sort of decide with them. Don't panic if you leave too much out again, dead easy to pin up. I'm just going to do a tiny bit of back comb to this section and just I'm going to weave it into the braid so you use a little bit of product here guys a little bit of back comb comb out that back comb and then I'm just going to take a little looped hair tool I get these off eBay just be careful they haven't got any sort of plastic bits sticking out because it'll catch on the hair and I'm just going to push this through the braid randomly Take our little section that we've just pulled from the front and just really, really gently weave that through. Now you can pin that as well underneath there. I'm just going to leave these sections out for now. So you'll see me now, a little bit of back comb and just pulling these through the braid, okay? So I feel like this area here was a little bit gappy. So I'm really pleased that we left some out at the front to be able to back comb and then fill that area in. So this is what we're left with to start with. A bit crazy, a bit too many curls, but we're just gonna leave those there for now, work on the other side, and then I'm gonna show you how to pin these curls so it looks all effortless and beautiful. Now as I move further down the hair line here, what I'm going to do is rather than taking it all the way into the braid, I'm actually going to weave it through 
these sections here just to break up that quite like sort of sweeping hair and then I'll probably take hold of those and pin them into the braid later on. So I've caved in guys, I'm spraying a little bit of dry wax spray just on the ends of these curls and then we're going to try and position them in a really pretty way to finish off this gorgeous style. So now guys it's what I call just getting your eye in now and just sort of having a play with where these strands look best. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to catch hold of a strand and I'm just going to push it straight into the centre of the braid, out of eye line, you can't see that strand at all. And then I'm just going to have a little tease and see how that's sitting. Keep teasing these sections. So I do actually want to see a little bit of the braids. I don't want it to be completely covered by curls, uh, but that's just kind of like my personal preference. So last little few going in now guys. So like I said before guys, Louisa hasn't been sort of trimmed yet, so I'm just taking my lovely kitchen scissors because I think some of you know, but some of you don't know, but I'm actually not a hairdresser. I just like doing updos and I just started to teach myself on YouTube about five years ago now. So I bet some of you are not happy with the way I'm doing this, but oh well. Leave me a comment. I can take it. So making sure, and I have actually done this with clients, obviously not this much. But if we do just want a few pieces out and she's got some crazy, crazy long bits, I'll just skim the ends. So hopefully the aim is, guys, that we can still see that we've created a braid here. But it's a very disguised, soft braid. There's nothing school French braid about this style. So I'm just going to do a little Louisa spin for you here. So we've got those sweeping sections coming in the side. We can still see it is a braid, but really, really soft. We've broken up that sweeping by folding in these sections from the front. And there we go. Voila. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slightly more in-depth tutorial. If you've got any suggestions with my camera work, please let me know. Also, any suggestions on styles, um, I'm willing to take requests. And I'll see you next time for another video. Bye!